सही रहा यार कुछ कुछ I've always, I've always ever, ever, like, never knew what to say when that case, when the question comes up. Tell me what you say about yourself. Tell me about yourself. It has always been a weird question. Um, so I'm offense, offense and kumise. Eriki beka stwana, you know, so that years to come, whoever's gonna watch this, but kono uka kore ki matwana. Eriki beka stwana. So I'm offense, offense and kumise. Itlagilo mo kabala zani. I'm from kabala zani originally, born and bred here. Um, and I am a makeup artist. What else? I think that's as far as I can go. What defines you? What, what defines me? You. What makes me me? Um, I think I can tell you this. What defines me is very broad, because the definition of my life comes from every chapter that I go through in life. So what I would define myself as would be something unrelated. And so what I mean. So what defines me is every chapter in my life that I'm in. It could be my spirituality. It could be at a time my fashion sense. It could be at a time where I'm from. It could be at a time. What I'm into, so I think what defines me at this time right now is just my spirituality. Yeah, you seem very eccentric to me. <laughs> you wanna go into detail about that? I wanna go into detail about that. Um, I think it's very very complex, and it's a it's 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 something that I'm very sensitive to talk about. But I will talk about it because there's just a lot of things, and like I I am one person who loves being cordial. I never like. Stepping on people and saying things, but this is about me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let me just be as free as I want to be. So what defines me at this point is my core in life. You know, my core in life. What I have discovered about what life means to me, which is through my spirituality, and obviously my spirituality um is very broad, man. I remember telling a friend of mine saying. I went to a Christian school, ne? But that's not where I discovered spirituality. I can't say Christianity, but spirituality. And now, in my present life, I've manifested so many things that I spoke about in my past. I'm living a lot of the things that I spoke upon myself. You know, so I think at this point in my life, what defines me is the infinite and the outer being power. That's bigger than us, and you know, just waking up every single day and being in the present moment and understanding that you have a power bigger than you, that's superior than you, making sure that every step that you take is guided, you know. And I think that's the one thing that defines me because everything else would be materialistic and it it would be worldly. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I'd be like, oh, what defines me is my fashion sense or whatever, but it's all worldly stuff. That don't define me. I think what defines me more than anything at this point in my life is my purpose, and a lot of people say that, but I feel like I have reached a certain level of understanding what life means to me. So yeah. What does life mean to you, and what is your purpose? What does life mean to me? Life means living, because I don't think I asked for life. I was given life. I was chosen to be alive. So that's what life means to me. I live because I'm the boss's son. If you get it. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. So now I can wonder why the most high. Yeah. You understand what I mean. So I was blessed with life, and I think that's what that's the only thing that life means to me because there's absolutely nothing that you will get out of life. Besides you arriving and arising to the to the occasion, which is your life, I want to create ground. Le fasu le kri like it. It changes. People come, people go, forever. Some seasonal. You understand? And that made me realize that 
everything that we are fighting for and chasing in this world it really doesn't mean anything what i should align myself to is my calling and my higher power which is i was given life i was chosen to give to be given life i mean if i, I didn't have anything to do in this earth i wouldn't have been here today so that for me is an everyday hey show me what i'm doing here give me the light guide me in any way through people through science through intuition through whatever like just constantly remind me of why i'm here because there's never been a moment where i chose life i now pray for life because i'm alive but i was given life at birth wasn't it but now because i'm alive i pray for a life but then i was given life out of my own will so it means i was chosen already yeah. to be alive and to do something magnificent in this world so i think that's what life means for me do you live life accordingly to your beliefs Accordingly, I don't know what's accordingly. Accordingly is a very big word. Um, I live life kapilo. I live life ka my heart. I, I believe I'm the most important person that there is every single day of my life. So me being okay validates that. My heart being pure validates that. My hands being clean validates that. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. So my accordance may not be something that's scripted or a policy of some sort. My accordance is how I feel. My accordance is my feelings. If I'm waking up in the morning and I'm doing something and I'm not happy about it or I don't feel good about it or I feel like man, there's something in my heart that's just not moving me, then it means I'm not doing justice to myself. So that's my accordance. I, I don't follow no body, I don't follow no policy, I don't follow no rule. I follow my soul and my heart. And as long as that is pure and I feel okay inside, then I'm okay because that's the whole point of life. I mean, you can lie to the whole world, but you can't lie to yourself. And my core life thing is to never lie to myself. Always, always, always be real about where I want to put myself. And that has always been my peace of mind because I've regretted a lot of things because I couldn't say a simple no. I couldn't say a simple I'm not comfortable. I couldn't say a simple Awa But today I'm a bigger person and a stronger person because I have gained the courage to live my life and not fear losing anything because I know what I'm living my life out of pure intentions. If I say no to something and it falls off, it doesn't have a meant for me. So that's just my accordance. I understand. Tell me a bit about your business. How that came to be. The process behind it. Yo, my business. The love of my life. Um, I don't have an accordance. Ne? So when I speak about my business, I get so crazy. Because that's my passion. That's my purpose. I'll tell, about, I'll tell you a story about how this came about. So around 20, 2009 actually, um, I had just matriculated and then my mom had just retired and she had started a business, you know, and that's livestock and she had zero experience in it. So it was very challenging. Then in the and it was winter, you know it was extremely challenging and she had put on a lot of money into that project so um after i matriculated it was quite clear that there's absolutely no plan for me well i had plans but obviously financially there was no plan and i one day randomly was Kowanda park and my mom had given me money to buy my cosmetics then i got on the park you know just a breather then I went to Wonder Park. I got into a click store. I was doing my shopping. There was a time where there was this labelo, a red, a cherry. It was not necessarily really lipstick, but it gave it neko tayanya, you know. So I, I loved it. I loved it because wow, I got beautiful lips, and it makes my lip more yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So it's giving empathy vibes, man. So I went to the click store, and then after I had done my shopping. This man came and approached me. How? Are you look like someone who can be in the store. 
patron dim awa na ile awa chef get is mbanyana so kena ha na good scam awa i'm just thinking i i guess scam say so he takes my number i don't take my his number um awa sharp o he's like you know what i'm going to call you for an interview and stuff like that we need someone like you in the store we've been looking for someone like this and 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 i walked to that like i'm just there i literally thought i was going to do advertising yeah or law or psychology cuz i'm a very mental person so those are my three things to do and then awa i give him my number i pay for my stuff i walk out life continues Two weeks later, and I tell my mom, "Wow, well, two weeks later, I remember call, call, that call. I can't even tell my mom and my brother we were going to a wedding. Go Rustenberg, yeah, my brother's friend. Um, this man calls me. Manjama Sango, Clicks Wonder Park. Please come for an interview. How? Interview? How? How? I'm not getting paid anywhere, man. Rustenberg, when I don't even have formal clothes, I'm straight for metric. So obviously the only formal clothes that I have would be that black trouser that we used to wear in school and that white t-shirt. Yeah. Pathetic! I can't believe I wore that. Lord, who mm -hmm. I can't believe. Hey, it's we are good day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Oh, um, and then I go to the interview. When I get to the interview, there's like the area manager. Very intimidating. I'm being asked questions about things that I have absolutely no idea of. And then, by God's grace. I got the job. Oh, I got the job and now when I get the job, I have zero experience in makeup, right? There was this other lady because I'm looking at her. She was the permanent there in the department, the beauty department. I was the casual. Like she's the first person ever who ever put makeup on me. I hope wherever she is, she's healthy and alive. Like I'm going to make her proud one day when I'm on the Forbes magazine. Yeah. And like quote her, she's the first woman that put makeup on me, and that was in twenty, I think now twenty, nearly them, but then now twenty ten, right? Black opal, use black opal. There was this mascara, what could look real, but it one million. Like what's the lashes you wear to Ghana? What's the king? At that time, I wasn't even exposed to lashes, fake false lashes. I wasn't exposed to anything. She's like, you can work, you can't work in this department. Look at this joy. I'm gonna juice you up, and then. As time went by, I gained momentum, and over Solomon, they had this thing. Yeah, they take you to trainings, yeah. like quarterly. They take you to trainings, product knowledge, and stuff like that. So, yeah, and then I started like gaining knowledge about the art form. But first, I gained knowledge about the product knowledge. It wasn't the art form. The art form came later now, because at first I was very insecure about doing makeup because I didn't know how to do makeup. Literally, so I wouldn't. I, I knew the products like, oh, this is this, this has this. No, what's the sun tray? We drop our mat there for twenty four hours. This mascara sells. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. But I now didn't know the art form. Then this one time we got to a training, and they were like, I today we're practicing the face. There's the face chat. And then I did the face for the first time, and I was so embarrassed. But then, yeah, that's how it began, and oh, ten years later. I'm looking back at this journey. I could like literally give you like my CV, every not even my CV anymore because I'm a business owner now. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> hey, we don't use that no more. Do you only change cheese? Eh? Do you only change cheese? Eh? So I applied, and also being a, a vocal person, people started seeing my 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 passion. I still grow in passion within that environment. I'm a people's person. I love networking. I talk, I make conversations, and then the area manager when they came for different brands started telling me about opportunities. Like, no, I'm a rep for uh, this brand. Go press it, press more, bula, inge, inge, inge. So apply, you know. And then I went on and applied. Then I went to press. Um, can I go press more? Look, give me some other brand, but give me Yo, collect tiki, collect tiki. Give me the casual TV. Ooh. Basically, you know, and I remember going to that mall and telling to my mom, "Get a job at the And I came back like that I had gotten a job, and the store manager at the time, "Go back to Sani, some other lady, almost short of school, almost swell, limpopian, well, kind limpopo. I'm not the horse champ, Sani. 
Where is the king? Because I did the job. I got the sales. Oh, can I kiss her? You know, I had the personality. I had everything. And from that, I started gaining the art form of it. Practicing it daily on clients. And, yeah. You know, like, you know, then, obviously, like, that's how it began. And then people would see me. And then someone would be like, no, you're good. Why don't you apply for this? And I'm like, okay, fine, cool. Plug me. Then I'd apply. Then I'd get an interview. You know, then, yeah. That's how it began. Yeah. So, would you say before 2009, before you were exposed to this industry, have you given it a single thought or did you just come Not into even. It? Not even. I committed to it because I feel like I was ordained to it. Yeah. It chose me. It called me by my name. That's why I didn't even struggle. That's why my journey, as challenging as it was, and as challenging as it is, it is beautiful challenges. Like, I, 10 years later, I would not, not choose anything else besides this. And when I mean besides this, I mean getting richer. <laughs> and that's, that's the next plan. That's the plan at the end of the day. Like, you know, I, I'm gonna go back to spirituality, right? I was never taught God at home. Yeah. Obviously, my grandmother goes to church and stuff like that, but that's not where I found God. Yeah. I went to a Christian school, I went to Christian school, that's not where I found God. I found God through conversations with Him, conversations with the infinite, conversations in my heart to be like, yo, this is my family situation, what's going to be next, what's going to happen next? And I, at some point, started to realize that this is a journey of, this is, this is a very unfolding journey. Yeah. It keeps unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. So what I must do, I must trust. I must trust because I'm chosen for this. And for as long as I'm chosen for this, I'll never ever ever struggle within this. I was given this on a silver platter. But I had to work my way into perfecting the craft. And by doing so, I understood that by the experiences that I've had, I started understanding that this is what I was called upon to do. This is what I was chosen to do. Because what a coincidence. Indeed. What a coincidence. Indeed. You understand? Yeah. And I started literally stepping back and being like, God, I see you. I see you everywhere and my career and business helped me intensify my love for the infinite because who would I have been had I not been chosen by him to be this person I look at my life every day and I'm like a beautiful accident. What a day. I walked into a click store. Yeah. Ten years later, I'm an award-winning makeup artist. Oh, I must get my awards to show you. I'm an award-winning makeup artist. And I'm here. I've traveled. I've done so much. Just because I was called upon it. And when I was called upon it, I thank God that he blessed me with the wisdom to continue within it. I never took it for granted because I was like, wow, man, you blessed me with the hands. You blessed me with the talent. Let's run with it. Ain't no looking back. And it became my core business now to educate and rewrite everybody who looked at us as people, babas and decide hasili. You know when people talk to you, what do you do? I'm a makeup artist, and what else do you do, honey? Like. I pay my bond with that. What do you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you get what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, 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 right. what am I to say? Oh, uh, make up my city. And then I, get a side hustle. No, it's not a side hustle. It is the core business. So, yeah. So, with your business now, currently, mm -hmm. what is the main aim, the goal, the objective? 
my objective I'm a very objective driven person um I can't share much about the insides of the business obviously however makeup isn't forever it's a forever evolving industry yeah. you must always be on your toes and I facilitated makeup professionally for five years so I'm a qualified makeup facilitator so you look at your career right and you look at your lifestyle and you look at your life in in, in entirety and you say to yourself where do I want to see myself look I have gotten to a point in my life where I no longer live for your like I live for my peace I live for my understanding so therefore when I talk about my business plans my business is a fundamental part of my life so there's no way that I can detach my life plans yeah. from my business plans okay. you understand what I mean yeah. so it has a lot to do with age it has a lot to do with um, um, placement where I want to what I want to align with you understand so there's gonna be a lot of switches there's gonna be a lot of corporate um, you know I just feel like as artists we were never taken seriously in the corporate environment and our business is actually corporate because we do corporate stuff when I do my paper trail when I do my finances when I do my codes when I do my stuff that's what what is that isn't that corporate yeah. it is corporate so now I'm merging those two worlds together in a very beautiful way so that I can also because I've done it for 10 years I've seen a lot of things I've partied I've done so many things I'm like ah, now I'm ready to settle down have my dogs you know and I want my business to also be on the same vibration as my lifestyle yeah. so that's where I'm headed at this point that's what I'm trying to build at this point currently because there's no me without my business my business is a huge part of my lifestyle so hence I'm saying there's no way I can detach my lifestyle from my business so my lifestyle plans affect my business plans so at this point we are more mature we are grown we are looking and investing into longevity and a little bit more zen a little bit more zen you know we don't look at young so that's brand offensive the face dresser makeup lifestyle and everything fabulous i am the brand so everything that i do in my life affects the brand you know so yeah i understand and in modern day society we see many companies with your same attributes what yeah. makes you stand out what makes you different yeah from all of that i think what makes me different more than anything is my ability not even my ability the god-given talent for me to constantly be able to merge my business with the purpose behind it because as a makeup artist i was telling a friend the other day i'm like as a makeup artist we do so much more than just doing makeup on people yeah well you can be a babysitter as a makeup artist <laughs> yeah hey if you get to a place yeah. and yeah, yeah. people never forget your kindness people never forget your your openness to just not chasing money but giving them the experience yeah. i'm an experience after you meet me or after you are around me there's something that you are gonna go back and take with you that's something that i have i don't know what it is but it was given to me yeah. and i'm not gonna question it i'm just running with it there's something about me that's just like even i myself struck myself a lot of times because my ability to forever rise above the mark in everything that i do and hence i'm saying i can't even be like it's a strategic plan that i wrote for three months or a map of some sort it has always been this favor that has mm -hmm. that, has, that has always been in my life and i think that's one of the things that set me apart and i'm hot my work ethic is on a hundred i work 24 7 
I worked in for some because that's my life. I, I and not because to be like, oh my gosh, like kill yourself, don't rest. Nah, that's my life. You know, yeah. like there's no like even when I'm not working, I wake up and there's a makeup case. I'm gonna do my makeup. Mm -hmm. Then a jiggy jiggy. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, hey, that like it's given to me. About the fancy. About fancy. Yeah. Um, Who is that? What is that? What does that mean to you? I thought offense was an alter ego at some point because, like, obviously, getting offense and, like, it's like a and you know, it's like a semi rural area. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And all these things that I know out of life are just like, you know, I learned them through offense, actually. So I thought offense was an alter ego for the longest time. But then I got to realize that offense is not even an alter ego. Offensy is actually a huge part of me. Like offensy is me. Offensy is offensy. It's just that offensy is the much more intense version of offensy. Offensy is everything offensy could not be when offensy was younger, when offensy had no voice, when offensy was just like out of options. You know, and then offensy was born and offensy became that warrior. You know, my name means a conqueror. Offensive. Yeah. You know, I'm a winner. Mm -hmm. And I, I never take that for granted. I live my name to the fullest. I call upon my name on this earth because I'm a winner. I'm a conqueror. So there's absolutely nothing that I can't do that I'm assigned to do. You know? So the offense came from yo when I was in school, people could not call me Kalibito, you know the 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 White teachers, yeah, hey, oh, fancy, <laughs> and yeah. you know what I mean. And then this one time, this one time, I'll tell you this story. Very hilarious. I got arrested in Durban, but it was South Point or something. Then next say eats. <laughs> so, there's this KFC in Durban, guys. I can like eats. It's very famous. I don't know if it's South Point or whatever. When I keep seeing it, so I guess I have to put us in the name. It's a moon, eh? So. I didn't know the ladies of the night by Mamu. I can't say those <laughs> names. I'll just speak to ladies of the night. Next time I saw by Mamu thing, yo, I saw a couple of my police when I was at the Lagamu Vening. I'm like, okay, hey, when I at the Lagamu Vening, yo, that time I have not even unpacked my luggage. Came with my friends. Kira ka chalo usa. Oh no, guys, now I get a mo. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not going to go to next. And my Zulu is bad that time. I'm trying to negotiate. It's not happening. I'm going to go to next. I get to jail. But I'm going to go to the next. Hey, get a banana back here. Who fish net? Who I brought the black? Who the wiki? Who me in the corner? I'm going to go to the next. And then, how are they? So, I'm going to go to the next. What business is it? So after that, my friends come by and then they bail me out. So when they bail you out, I still have the slip because I feel like one day I'm going to tell the story again. So, um, as I, I think that's now, 2013, as I, I'm going out, like, obviously there's no way I can say a fake name. I'm scared for my life. I am like, you know, yeah. offense and commise. they gave me back the slip. My rate, my name was written O F E N C Y, and my surname was spelled correctly, but my name was O F, and I legit said, "I'm Kitwere." There was no way I was gonna play with the law. I said my real name, but my name was written O F N, O F E, and Offensi, in Kumisa, and I was like, "God damn it." <laughs> This is the Lord. I'm given this name. Yeah. So that for me was like a stamp to brand Offensi, the face dresser. You know, so Offensi at first was an alter ego. But as time went by, I understood that Offensi was the version of Offensi. Offensi could not be. You know, so yeah, yeah Offensi emerged and Offensi didn't become toxic to Offensi. Offensi and offense started becoming one. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, when sometimes you have an alter ego, it's like you are filtering 
your true self. Can't mm. know actually Ofensi was actually my true self that I was filtering as Ofensi. Okay. Yeah. So with the business, how did it grow, evolve? Um and I'm gonna say it again. The evolution of my business is the evolution of my life. Me evolving as a person affects my business. Because when you evolve, obviously, there are certain spaces that you don't want to see yourself in no longer, no more, right? Yes. Obviously, then you have to now start molding your business into having a different market so that it can be in sync with your certain evolution as a person or growth. So I have always called upon my life in a sense that I believe in the world. I believe the world is big. I believe... I believe in the kinds of strangers and me as a makeup artist for 10 years imagine the amount of strangers I've been around the amount of strangers I've walked into the houses the amount of strangers that have helped me without knowing me that is the one thing that has always inspired me to not be boxed being in this business taught me that the world is flipping big and there are people who are gonna love you there are people who are going to root for you. There are people who are going to yeah. buy your brand. And, you know, hence I'm saying, I used to be like this little, you know, because you are sold this dream because you only see your environment and they're telling you that nobody made it far here. Oh, you think you're going to do this? No, you're not going to win. But something in me was very brave to take that leap of faith. So my business growth is my life goal, growth. Every time I personally grow, I also implement it in my business because it wouldn't make sense if I personally grow and say I'm now moving to New York, but I have clients in the east of whatever. Every move I make is in alignment with my business because my business is my life, you know. So when I moved to New York, I would have already had a strategic plan as to how am I going to get business in New York. Yeah. You know. So yeah. So that's how Fancy the Face Dresser grows. Like, I am not a person that sits and I plan, but I'm more of a doer. Like, I'm more of a doer. I'm more of a risk taker. Um, I have very little fear in life. And I believe in my life, like with everything in me. Now, not on Gadoya. Tell me about the hardest thing about this industry that you did not realize before, before your business, before all of. Yeah, I think personally, I your moral compass your moral compass because this business you deal with a lot of people right yeah. and people can sometimes impose themselves on you so if you don't have a high moral compass you end up losing yourself in everyone you meet because today I'm going I'm, I'm doing your makeup tomorrow I'm doing his makeup tomorrow I'm doing his makeup it's all yeah. different people it's all different households it's all different rules so imagine if I would lose myself in every person I meet, who would I have been today? I'd be a mess. You know, so I think that's the hardest thing. And the comparison as well. It's an industry full of comparison. Like, nah, I'll just make up this, that's that. Whenever you do this, makeup is like cooking. You can start with chopping your vegetables first. I can start with boiling my meat first. But at the end of the day, the end result will be us eating. Isn't that? Yeah. That's yeah. like makeup. So if you get lost in the politics of it, you will get lost yourself. So I think that's the hardest thing for me. Okay. So as an... Mm -mm. Wait. It's no longer the hardest thing. It was one of... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me correct that. Yeah. It's no longer the hardest thing. I've overcame that. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on top of it right now. So tell me about that. What are the many struggles that you face with being, entrepreneurship? Yeah, entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship has a lot of decision making. Um, entrepreneurship has a lot of 
you need to love yourself enough to pull yourself away from the toxicity of what it means to be a hard worker sometimes in our generation. We live amongst a generation that while well, you were sleeping, I was. So you, you all the time have to be proving a point yeah. that you're working. And sometimes ne, you see that you are working but it's not productive. It's not getting you anywhere. So you need to be so strong to a point where you strategize your business in a way that it will be in alignment with your authentic self. Because we can all make noise, but are we getting the results? Very few are. But now we can all go to social media and post something that can make us look like we're working. It's that easy. You know, like everybody's just like while you were sleeping, I was working. Yeah. So what? I mustn't sleep. Just to show you guys that I'm working. Yeah. The hardest thing I think for me in entrepreneurship was detaching from that and balancing my health, mental health with being an entrepreneur and understanding and telling myself and showing myself that you are a hard worker. And you work hard for everything you have however you don't have to skip three nights of sleep just to prove to yeah. social media that me i'm a hard worker however i don't have to like now bleed and like you know like ah me i work hard am i getting the results or am i just liking you liking the fact that i work at the results there and that's when i went back and i was like whoa nah refocus there's something that i call a rebirth of control and that's what i did in my life when i took re-control of everything that has to do with me that's why i don't have many friends that's why a lot of people like are out here saying things about me because a lot of people like you when you are a fool a lot of people like you when you are influenced but the minute you run by the voice in your head people can't take you because they can't control you they hate that and that's what I did I was like go back see is this really it be honest are the numbers adding up no nah, they're not then why am I lying to myself why the facade why the dust with nothing and that's when I started to refocus recalculate and realign with what matters the most what going back home matter the what matters the most is impact um. impact everything are you impactful i am i'm asking you plot twist <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you understand what i mean plot twist are you impactful in what you do in your everyday life when you wake up are you impactful and to be impactful, you don't have to be violent, you don't have to be loud, you don't have to, be, to lose sleep for five days. It's alignment, purpose. You were given impact the day that you were born. You were given a story, you were given an assignment. It's just how you take it upon. There's nothing the world will do for you. But there's everything you can do while you are in the world. And that's what I'm doing everything that I can do while I'm in the world because there's nothing the world can do for me I'll die and I'll live everything everything nothing will come with me but everything that I impacted will forever be my legacy so that's when I started switching in terms of like my entrepreneurship mentality and skills and also getting mentors get a mentor Get a mentor, get someone who knows something that you don't know to hold your hand. Do that. Never think you can do it alone. Because being and running a business takes a lot of things. Finances, logistics, um, media, PR and stuff. You need all of that. And, sometimes, and, and I, f sadly, small businesses, you have to be the one doing all of that your, yourself. Because sometimes you can afford outsourcing the services. So what happened is that through my business, I met a lot of people who were doing some of those things and they mentored me into like understanding them better, you know, and seeing that, nah, man, 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I always we saw on it's not about that it's not about like kish kish. It's about like being soft. Now I'm soft. I don't wanna lie. You can see my fur coat. You can see me. I'm soft. <laughs> I'm soft. Like eh na na begazela gi kon. Begazela. I keep begazela chef in everything that I do. So that was like my biggest lesson and I feel like uh, everybody that I'll mentor in my coming years that's what I'll tell them. Be soft to yourself because you are better off well taken care. You are no use a mess. You are no use overused. You are no use overdone but you are at your best when you are taken care of either by yourself or by people around you and i always advise that you take care of yourself first because you can't blame everybody for not being there for you when you could have been there for yourself entrepreneurship has a lot to do with discipline decision making being having a conscious soul and understanding core it's either I want this. There's no gray in entrepreneurship. It's black or white. If you're a gray person, it's it's not a life you can yeah. live according. Cause you need to decide: Am I jumping into this deal or not? Am I doing this or not? I wanna go gray. I wanna maybe let me try it out. Ah ah. It's either a doer or a don't. And you need your intuition to guide you. You need the higher power to guide you. You need to be sane to be guided within. So I think that's the one thing that I've learned through entrepreneurship personally. Hence I'm saying, ever since I've been this on like a makeup artist, my faith has grown very much so. Because I've learned that it's all about taking risks. Every day of your life when I was at risk. So and taking risks has a lot to do with faith. You are taking a risk with thinking Tell me about the risks you've taken mm. Tell me about that I wanna know Girl! <laughs> moving! Boom! Moving! Woody Bonte! Woody! Woo! The risks! I shall I... Yo! Kamalazane is a very small village And a lot of people that I meet ne? in Joburg or in Cape Town or wherever when I tell them and I show them where I'm from they're like where did you get this mentality because this doesn't look like a place that can yeah. craft this mentality within a person and I'm like through the risks that I took I spoke earlier about how I asked my mom to take me to a better school not necessarily, I can't say better let me say to a different school you know why because I felt like I wasn't relating to where I was. I said to her, and it, that what I did that is a risk. I'm now gonna like give you different dimensions of risks. Yeah. I said to her, you may not have the money, but what I that school is not where I'm aligned to. I don't understand the conversation. I don't understand the culture. I don't understand the environment. I don't get anybody. I don't care. I don't even have anybody that I can relate to and I don't care if you have the money or not you are gonna move me from that school that was a risk that my mom took and I will forever ever ever in all my life give my mom her flowers because she taught me how to lead she taught me how to be a risk taker she taught me how to have faith by doing by doing not by preaching by doing by her taking a stand and saying yeah sharp sure, okay no better feel like a normal job but you are gonna go to that school that you want you are gonna go to that school that you want and I've never from that moment been to any other school besides every school that I chose to go to and she somehow managed to make it work and that's why I'll never fail because I saw it in front of my eyes happening. I saw the happening. I saw the happening like in front of my eyes. I saw the numbers not getting up, but us still being there, thriving. You know? Yeah. So so that 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 that's the risks. I've taken so many risks. Yo, so many. In your career, mm. tell me about that. In my like the major risk you've taken. The major risk I've taken. 
I've resigned so many times. I don't even have a major risk anymore. Yo, I've left jobs. Yo, I've taken so many risks. I just feel like I've taken so many risks. Like I, I don't even like even say it's a risk anymore. You know why? Because my life was written before me. So there's nothing such as a risk. I'm in alignment. I want a risky. There's no risk. I fight my comfort by aligning with my highest power. So it's never a risk. It's just me evolving. I'll always survive. I'll always come up a winner. I'll always win. Regardless. So I don't look at it as if it's a risk. Nah. It's just... And many times, you know what happens? God puts you in positions where you have no choice but to jump. He makes it very uncomfortable because he knows that you're selling yourself short. He has no choice. Like, I've been in so many situations where I got fired. And I was like, yo, it took me being fired for me to step up. Because if I wasn't fired, I wasn't going to step up. I wasn't going to be out here getting my highest power. So, I don't feel like there are risks. I just feel like there's alignment and there's a higher power guiding you. There's a higher power guiding me more than anything. I'm chosen. And I'll forever live with that and rely on that. All my steps are guided by that. The higher power being guided. Every single day when I wake up, I pray. I remember I was having a conversation with a friend and he was like, No, you can't pray so many times. And I was like, look, every single day now, when I wake up, I think you need courage more than risks. Because you can take risks but not be courageous. You need courage. So like well, no matter what you have, you can have the resources, you can have the money, you can have if Usna Kareji, there's nothing you'll do in this world. You need the guts. You need the audacity. You need the liver to do life shit. Cause I swear it, it's fine. Cause you're gonna everything in your power. But if you don't have the guts to be and claim who you are, you forever mumble in your room. And I say it loudly. I remember saying to a friend every single day. Now I pray, and when I pray, I call upon what I want to attract. The beauty of life, the love, the light, the wealth, the health, the healing, the wisdom, the prosperity, the abundance, the grace, the direction, the greener pastures. And everything that's not that will miss me. So hence I'm saying, for me, it's more courage than risk. Because it, it's everything that has to do with faith. Like this tattoo that I have, which is my favorite. It says here, faith belongs to the simple-minded. If you want to practice faith, you must be simple-minded. Like, New York. That's faith. You must be simple-minded. And what you, what you wish upon will manifest. Obviously, you'll do things that will align with you going to New York. Obviously, you'll do your passport. What's no going to wear your passport? Hi. Man, there are people who didn't even have a passport but ended up in New York. You get so for me it has always been my business is so purposeful. You know, it's so hard to detach the life story from the business. And I know you asked about business risks, but it all comes to my life choices and my life decisions because I had to move Mokabalatsani to go find another market. That's a risk. It was a personal move, but it was also involving my business. You understand what I mean? So, yeah. Um, in this industry, you meet a lot of people. I'm sure you work with different people every day, kind of. Mm -hmm. But what I want to know is who is the most prominent? individual that you've ever worked on and would you love what who would you love to work on again um 
interesting question but i feel like i have so many beautiful people in my life where i cannot even micro like say one person no it could never be a thing there's been so many people that i've worked on there's been so many people that i want to work with again um it could never be one person that could never be a thing because everybody has something different they have shown me a different energy a different vibe so definitely not one person but many people many people i'd wish to have a repeat of the moments that i've shared with them um the the the, the you know how they've opened up their homes to me you know what they've shown me it's amazing like every single day like you walk into someone's house and it's a different house it's a different home it's a different culture it's a different everything and you learn a lot like from the food to the drinks to every little thing you know so um and i i i i strongly believe i'm this person because of the experience because this world has taught me so much i don't think with my own personal pocket i would be able to have traveled where i've traveled or been where i've been with my personal pocket eating so many food that i've eaten no when i drank like <laughs> yo it's been crazy you know so with my personal pocket i don't think i would have done that but i'm so thankful and hence i'm saying i've had so many people touch my life in so many different ways so there's absolutely no way that i can narrow down to one person um yeah my clients are just you know the loves of my life you know the, the sisters the brothers the friends because most of the time i'm at work but i've never felt lonely i've never felt out of place i've never felt like i'm missing out on anything because they've always 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 played that vital role i remember this one time i went to a client i was shooting something actually i won't mention names but i'm sure when they see this they'll know that i'm talking about them um then i, I was in midrand and I had flu, it was the Easter weekend. This year, eh, my kidnapper, I want kidnapper per se. No, 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 <laughs> but uh, let's call your mom. They called my mom and they were like, Your child is safe. You understand? So I'm I'm so blessed and I feel like the blessing comes from praying for the type of life. I said earlier, I evolve with my age and with everything. So I say to God what type of clients I want so that they match my type of lifestyle. And I've been blessed to have such clients i'd say 99.9 percent .9 of the time i have those clients like every time i go to work i know that it's a it's a journey yeah and i'm so thankful for that because there's like so many people that i know in this world that are so unfulfilled with what they're doing and it doesn't matter what what you're doing gives you but if you're not fulfilled it doesn't give you joy like what's the point you know and what i do gives me so much joy so i'm just like po, 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 po. <laughs> <laughs> yo yeah. yeah so no actual a-list names mm -mm. Mm -mm. i Every single person that books a fancy the first dress is an A-lister because they can afford me first of all. Yeah. Second of all, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> like you know, so everybody that that that, that books me is an A-lister. And like guys, like I was saying, my mom says a plant food mo ga yuga, and you plant food it says it. No, he can't talk about the plant food ne. I'm just joking. Um, yeah, so. I can't give a listers. I work with phenomenal, phenomenal people, like phenomenal people, and I'll say it again: phenomenal people. And it would be such a disrespect to even grade them as a lister or whatever. Every single person that pays me to come do that face, 
is an A-lister because they are with offensive the face dresser. So I don't mind where you are. I don't mind what you have. For the fact that you have paid for me to come work on you, you are an A-list star. You are with offensive the face dresser. So cheers to every single body that has ever booked me in my 10 years of being a makeup artist. I mean, Motokamotokabato. I am who I am today because of the many people that have constantly taken a chance in my business and in my growth. Yeah. You know, I've got clients where I did her makeup when she was getting married. Then I did the daughter's makeup when she was baptizing her first child. Then I did the grandchild's wedding makeup when they were being graduate when they were graduated. So I have long term clients, and that for me is hence I'm saying I've grown so much through my clients. Because they've seen me through my weaknesses, my strengths, my, you know, everything. And I repeat it again. It's so hard to detach my personal life from my business. Yeah. Because my personal life and my business are so intertwined. It's like, you know, it's, it's, offense is offense. Fancy is offense. You know, mm -hmm. when I wake up, I do this. When I sleep, I do this. In within my sleep, I'm thinking, yo, I saw black masks, um, black wipes today. Like, I'm getting them, you know? Yeah. So, um, I just feel like everybody who has been around me, who has worked with me, who has done something with me is an alias star because they know quality, because I am a work of quality. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, ting ting, chen chen, blah blah. <laughs> and how do these clients get in touch with you? Do you have a website, email? Website, email, I have everything. Everything. Every platform you can think of, I'm on. Um, word of mouth, I think it's one of the most key b um, ways of my marketing. I'll say this, guys, I spoiled on myself, I'm very clumsy, I'm so sorry, but I'm still fabulous. Um, I... <clears throat> I, I, I still do my business the old way. I don't rely entirely on social media. No, I still do the actual promoting, go and play, get the pump there and give to people, go, excuse me, go to malls. There's videos of me doing that. Um, and I still do that. Um, I just feel like I know my strengths and my weaknesses. And I feel like I have a very nice aura so that's where my <clears throat> strengths are doing business like in a physical form going yeah. to the robot with a face on dressed up give up to the pamphlet i think that's one of the things word of mouth um referrals social media of into the face dress on instagram every platform like friends the face dress on that has been the way um but more than most word of mouth you know referrals and just me like pushing my brand yeah and to get in touch with you like if i want my makeup done today yeah. how would i come to speak to you and like would i have to set up an appointment or can i just call you and say yeah, this is an emergency any help would you a an appointment is much it's very much so appreciated because it gives me time to plan however a I'm available 24-7, but don't abuse me. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm available 24-7, but like, also like, be obviously understanding that I've, and the things that I need to get, like lashes and stuff, you know, like screening the client's face, skinning your face as a client, planning for you and stuff like that. So yeah, um, yeah, but then it's very easy to get in touch with me. Phone call, social media, um, Facebook, Twitter. Instagram, WhatsApp, I'm available. Yeah. Yeah. Add offensive face dresser everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>